we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father of blessings, help us to escape from this evil where we do not believe the word because of my thoughts and my theories. Help us to awaken from being a slave to the devil. God's word isn't theory. We have to obey exactly. That's when we can be with you. Our lives. Help us to check to see if it's right with the word. And this dawn, may we receive help. We're not help us to awaken from not receiving the help where you give it to us now. May we be a blessed man where we receive the best things because of me, my family, because of me, this country is ruined. Am I still outside of Christ where we cannot discern the evil spirits? What is it that we're looking toward? What is it that we're thinking about? If we hold on to the things of yesterday, help us not to become a devil. But at this time, we believe that there will be a new start. All families, we believe there will be a new hope. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's say together, sheep. Are you going toward God's word or not, the way to the way to check is by the word. So if you don't repent, it's either you have the holy, you either have demons or the Holy Spirit. So if you pray without repenting, then you become a shaman, a fortune teller. So you look at someone, their actions, they're always tormenting others. But if you have demons inside of you, you don't know that you're tormenting others. So people who don't do well. When I do well, I don't do well. You have a look. If I keep tormenting others, and yet you don't know. You know, even amongst your family, your brothers, you'll see, oh, if every time that person comes, they they make others suffer. And yet they, uh, they, don't, they themselves don't know. They're like, who? Who do I torment? But every person hates them. Even amongst friends, it's like that. Oh, I wish that person didn't come. Except they don't know. They think that they're living rightly, so they're mistaken. You know, demons, because they're deceived, they don't know. But it's this word that teaches us correctly. That person next to you, they don't like you. Then you're evil. That's what it's teaching us. But we don't know that I am evil. So God, when he says that he helps us, you don't know that you're living with evil, your actions. I'm teaching you that it's evil and I will change it to good. That's his help. Psalms chapter 46, verse 5. Let's find it. So you and I, can we only do this once? No. Because the evil continues to flow from our hearts, we have to surely do this three times a day. So if you do this rightly, then even now our workings will happen. If you say, oh, I know, Psalms chapter 46, verse 5, that is being proud and arrogant. This dawn is the first dawn. It's never come to me my whole life. And so God says, this dawn will never come to you again. And it won't ever exist. That's this dawn's time. But how proud and arrogant and how tight are we to our past thoughts that we're outside of Christ, that we're like, oh, that dawn, oh, it's that same old dawn. So when we hear Psalms chapter 46, verse 5, we're like, I already know that. That's the worst evil. So already your actions, your thoughts are different. You sitting here, you're different. If you can make it that first time, that's someone who succeeds, but you don't. Oh, I've heard this hundreds of times, you know, 365 times a year. So already you're evil. You're already so conceited and proud and arrogant. You're, you're, the, you're worthless and yet you can't discern yourself. Someone who, no matter how much they try and they don't do well, that's what they're caught up in. So this dawn, when have you ever breathed this air? You know, when? In, this, in all your lifetime, when have you had this moment before? This is just a once 
once in a lifetime moment. But because of your thoughts, you're like, oh, I did this yesterday, I'll do it tomorrow. Already that's evil. Your disease won't be healed. You won't receive answers. That's someone who is caught up in their filthy thoughts and theories. And yet we go not knowing this. So God teaches us. Psalms chapter 46 verse 5, let's read it together. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Amen. You know, when you weave, and that's why Matthew chapter 9 verse 16, the Lord talks about weaving cloth. The, the new cloth and the old cloth. What is this weaving? In order to weave, you, you, you have the thread and it keeps going back and forth. When other people look at it, if you look at it wrongly, you think, oh, the, the thread's just going back and forth the same spot. Why don't you just do it once and just get, and just finish? No, it seems like it's the same thing, but it can't go to the same spot. It always, so that's our daily life of faith. That's how this cloth is weaved. But people who don't know, they're like, why is it just going back and forth on the same spot? No, it won't get weaved. It has to go back and forth. So our lives, receiving God for, a help from God, that's what it's like. So if our repentance is, is not enough, we're like, ah, oh, the same thing again daily. Oh, Psalms chapter 46, verse 5, it seems like the same thing daily. But as you eat, if you're like, oh, do I have to eat this food again? Already your body's sick. Oh, mom, have you made rice again? That means you're sick or the food isn't tasty. That's when you say that. But if you're healthy, someone who's right, the food that they're given, they know that if they're not going to, if they don't eat, They'll die. They know that they have to eat to get strength and to live. So they're different. Even though it's the same work, your thoughts are different. So here, this is where it's decided whether you receive help from dawn or not. You see people who don't receive help at dawn. They're like, oh, I did this yesterday. I already know that. Oh, tomorrow, I already know the breakfast that mum makes. Just knowing it, does that make you fall? No. That's what makes you ruin. That's what makes you fall. People who don't do well, that's what they're doing. And that's why they come here and fall asleep. Oh, I've already eaten. I've, ate, I've eaten it yesterday. I'll eat it tomorrow. So if you're not eating, it's you that gets weak and then you die. That's the way you go. So this is where you don't do well. It seems simple. But you and I, if we don't repent enough, you don't have a new start today. You're sitting here saying, oh yeah, I came here yesterday. Because you're holding on to yesterday, you cannot receive what is new from God. And that's why nothing works out. You see that person is released. They're not. Even though everything is set up to work, they can't, even though the blessings, they can't take them. And even if they do, they spill it. So you may... You may grow the crops, but you don't get to eat it. You build a house, but you don't get to live in it. You store up, but it has nothing to do with you. So it's those who are disobedient who receive these dis these disasters. In so what is this dawn that we have to do? Everything we try with human strength, no matter how much you succeed, even if you're the president, you know, even if you get a good, you you become famous. If you build up this city, if God doesn't help you, you're it's finished. You look even at our country's presidents. They pick all these respectworthy people and they have all these helpers and yet they end up in prison. They end up their names dirty. Why is it that they have to finish their lives like that? They didn't want to do they didn't want to do that, but their actions, their lives, that's the way they lived. So God says whoever it is, it's God who is working in them. Why is it that they wanted to end their lives so filthily? But it's showing it doesn't work according to what you want. So we have to obey God's word. God's word is so amen. And yet at this dawn, you know, if we don't make this help mine, so what, what are you building your city with? What is it that you're trusting in as your city? If you trust in that, you'll be ruined. If you trust in God, if you depend on God, you'll live. Even if you don't have anything, if you depend on Him, you'll live. But if you betray Him, you'll be ruined. 
So we say that we haven't betrayed, but outside of Christ, that is betrayal. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. Let's find it. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. He will help at dawn. But if you're holding on to something that you have stored up, you won't receive help. This dawn, this is the first time in my life if you realize this is the first time, because this dawn will never come again. And it, when it goes past, you can't hold on to it. You can't get it back. So this is such a good time. At this time, it's Almighty God who's helping. How good is this? But we say, oh, we had this dawn yesterday. It will come again tomorrow. You don't know that you are the worst of evil. That's my thoughts. My thoughts are enemies of God because it's outside of Christ. And then you ask for help. So how? How can you get it? So this dawn is a new time that will never come in your lifetime again. This is a time where the just judgment comes and God helps us. So this is the first time. Help? If you receive it once in a lifetime, you don't, you don't want to forget it. You know, people are so strange. Yet if you receive help daily, you forget about that. If you don't breathe, you'll die. This air, it's so precious. And yet we breathe daily, all the time. And so there's hardly anyone who knows how precious air is. They say, yeah, it's precious, but then they just treat it like it's nothing. This is how we're so dirty because we're corrupt. But if you're saved from death even once, let's, you know, if you live where you're about to die because you can't breathe, that you're thankful for. Even if you're saved from almost dying, you're like, oh, you know, I can't forget this my whole life. But you, but that's how stupid we are. You're, you're thankful for that one time that you were saved from almost dying. But giving, being given this air, there's hardly anyone who's thankful for air. And if someone wrote about that, people will just scoff at that because people, they're like with like. So we scorn God's grace so much. You know, that's how dirty we are. So this dawn, it's, it's the first time moment by moment it's the first time so it's when we say it's the first time that's how fresh it is but if that doesn't come to us we're not inside of christ if we hold on to yesterday's bowl it's dirty even though i ate from that it's dirty it's already dirty so to make it clean the only way is to wash it new anew so yesterday we had sin come out already and so so we're already tied to our past thoughts. So what we ate yesterday, we have to wash. So daily, he gives us our daily food. If we realize this, then our disease will be healed. Our problems will be solved. By this dawn's help, everything will work out. But you can't have this heart. You have this disease from yesterday. Oh, I, I've had this disease for a month. And so you hold on to that. And then you say that you've done four-step repentance, that you've gone inside of Christ. You haven't. What was yesterday's is over. It's a new start. God is helping me for the first time. But you're like, oh, I received help yesterday. So you, you put God away. And so you can't have a new start. So it's a new start. There's, I have nothing. At this time, someone who receives God's help and someone who doesn't, it depends on your thoughts because he does according to your thoughts. So it's a difference in your thoughts. What is it that I have to do? You have to make a new vessel. You have to become a new wineskin, but you don't. Oh, yesterday I heard that sermon yesterday, Psalms chapter 46 verse 5. I've memorized this. Already you've gone back to the old wineskin. So the old cloth, sorry. So God will never help you. So because he doesn't help you at dawn, your disease isn't healed. Your your family, your children's problems aren't solved. This is the first time in my life. Whenever, it's always a new, a new start. Why is it that you like to go traveling? Because we're travelers. A traveler has to travel to be to be joyful. Why is it that? horses stand when they sleep why is it that cows lie down because 
Horses are horses and cows and cows. So each one has a comfortable position. Well, a traveler is 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 comfortable when they travel, but you you just sit there. So then you start to rot. So a sheep, if it keeps lying down, it 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 starts to rot. It's it. But you are tied to your thoughts. You don't know that that you're sitting there lazy. So that's what's. So that if we make a new cloth, a new, then you receive help. If you don't become a new cloth, then a new wine skin, then you have demons, so you can't do well. But you're doing this every dawn. So when I look at your face, yesterday you didn't have joy. Today you don't have joy. But if you open your eyes, you can see these blessed people and these unfortunate people that. Those people without blessings, their faces are black. They look like gorillas. They may have washed their face, you know, in the terms of the flesh, that they seem to be clean. But if you look from here, they're black. No matter how much they put on makeup, they're black. In my eyes, they look black. And then, if you see the demons inside of them, it's not just they're black. You see all the scars, and but someone who repents, if you look at them. Even though their skin may be black, they shine with light. You know, in Korea, we say you know something light is like a moon, but the moon's not even that bright. But they shine, so you can see that that person has repented. You can see who isn't. They're sitting there today. They're unfortunate. They could be in danger. You can see from here. You can see it all. A lot of people they try to look nice by putting on makeup. You can't hide your face. You can see it all from here. What a precious promise this is! Because I can see, that's why this word. But those who are blessed, even though they're sitting in the back, you can see their faces as if they're here. Those people who aren't. Who don't can't receive blessings, even though they're sitting here, they're faint. It seems like they're far away. If that becomes worse, they will receive a disaster. So, in order not to receive that disaster, this sermon changes for for what they need. Why is it that the sermons aren't simple? You know, why do you give us so much? Because I can see this person's going to die. This per that person's going to die. There's so much to give. This vitamin, that vitamin, and that's why it it gets drawn out. It's because someone needs to eat that. If I couldn't see it, then I would just do anything and just and just pass over it. I just do one thing. No. Here, if someone's got a headache, you don't give them a stomach medicine. You know, if that person's stomach's hurting, you don't give them a headache medicine. So that's why this and that goes out. And so after a sermon, at least there's ten to fifty things inside. So you have to eat these things. So that you can at least survive, live, and come here the next time. So when I give you the word, it's not me; it's what the Father makes me do. So just because you fall asleep, there are people. It's okay; it's not all bad. But those people who are always falling asleep, they there is something they need to repent of. Someone who's always falling asleep. There are a lot of people here. Who, a lot of people that don't come here. They have problems. They are ruining their households, and yet they don't know. And then they put the blame on others. They say, "Oh, it's because I had bad luck," or "Oh, it's because of that embezzler." No, it's because of yourself. Because they don't know this, they're holding on to that grumblings, and that's why they don't do well. They don't become a new wine skin. So, who is it that God helps at dawn? Someone who's inside of Christ, who is new. Someone who's made a new. Dish, someone who has repented anew. That's the person that God helps. If you don't do this, no matter how much you ask for help, He won't help you. If you have a dirty, a dirty vessel, no matter how much you ask for help, where it's dirty, only demons stick. That's one John chapter three verse eight. So you come for dawn service, but there are people who end up、um, putting demons inside of themselves, and there are other people who receive help. So we can't have demons inside of us. So it's when we can't say it with good words, you know, when they can't wash. So you have to you have to say it severely. 
Proverbs chapter 29, verse 19, so they can have a new start with God's help. You know, I'm a fake if I just leave you alone. If you don't listen with good words, where does the Bible tell you to use this? If that person, if that becomes more, their face becomes more dark, they will receive disasters. So that's why you have to sage harsh words, just like you hit their legs. You know, you have to pierce their heart so that they can fix it and leave as a blessed man. And then you hear later the news. They were in such danger, but then they passed over that. But to block this and to give blessings, let's only receive this dawn at, at uh, help at dawn. Let's all receive. Let's surely receive this. How good God is. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. So to make a new wineskin. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the wineskins burst and the wine pours out and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins and both are preserved. Amen. So this time, if you say this is the first time in my whole lifetime, no matter how much you want to do this, if you don't go inside of Christ, you can't. You're sitting there going, yeah, I'm the same as before. Your clothes are the same. You know, me, I'm the same. The person next to you is the same. So it's so it's easy to think like that, but that's someone who's outside of Christ. No. It's the first time you've seen that person. It's the first time that your, your surroundings are like that. But it's when your heart changes that you can do this. The way to change your heart, the only way is to wash that sin with the blood of Christ. When you do this, then God will surely come. And so you see the world anew. Because you see it anew, you see that person, oh, that person, they've become dirty. And with love, you repent of it as my sin and you exhort them. If you truly love your neighbor, that is when God is with you. But if you don't have that for the person next to you, then you're outside of Christ. You're living according to your thoughts. That person, they plant disasters and they go the way for disasters for me and my children. So then after they live that day, they're like, why is my destiny like this? At this dawn, you didn't receive help. You're holding on to that old patch of cloth. So because God didn't make any new, you know, you planted disasters and that's why later only problems come. And you and your children don't do well. And that's why you have disease. Why are you holding on to that? Whether it's 10 years, 20 years, that's that's nothing in front of, that's useless in front of God. You know, no matter how long you've been a bad fruit, if you're cut and grafted in, it's over. You say, oh, you know, this, is, this has been for 20 years. You know, that's your thoughts. Don't do that. Well, pastor, why do you say, even though it takes a long time? Well, if you're not victorious now, well then, if it, you do it again. It's not that you have so many sins, it's going to take hundreds of years. Because you can't escape from those thoughts and you're holding on to that, then today, be you got to try it again. But with Almighty God, it's over in one day. You know what Almighty means? It can finish in one time. It can, it can finish this moment. So in other words, all things are possible. It's that almightiness that we have to have. God helps at dawn. He helps you with almightiness. That's what we have to have. He, God, who helps with almightiness. Why is it we don't know him? Because we don't know Jesus. We only know him as much as we repent. And that's why you have to do swordsmanship to know properly. You know, if you don't do this, if you have only one knife, you you can only use it for 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 those things daily. But if you catch a cow, you can't use it on that. So, you know, if you try to cut up a cow and you try to cut it with nail clippers, it's, it could take you more than one month and it will start to rot. So you're doing, you're using things that don't work for that for that job. So. So for a big thing, you need a big sword. For, you know, cutting up a, a little spring onion, you know, you can't use a huge knife. You're just going to use a small one. So it has to be right. 
So you need a you need to be able to use a big sword to even use the little ones. So how much of God's word are you holding on to? You know, you hold on to this tiny little knife. Maybe you can just sharpen your pencil with that. So that's why I'm not receiving help at dawn. A new heart. You have to go in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So if you're living without this heart, God, in order for you to realize, he puts problems in front of you because you didn't receive help at dawn. So straight away you go home and you have problems because you didn't receive help here. So for you to receive blessings, that's why problems happen. And you're like, but you don't realize this. And you're like, oh, I went to dawn service. Why am I Why am I getting these problems? You know, because you went, that's why you're receiving those problems. You know, you otherwise you'd straight away just get the disaster. But he's teaching you, look, you've got this this bomb here he's he's tell, telling you he's show, he's making it appear so when you go home the, when these problems happen it's because you didn't receive help properly at dawn so that's why it's come so quickly by four step repentance if you get rid of it then that problem ends and it changes to blessings and you'll receive help the whole day but because you fall and you're like and you throw the cloth and you fall And that's why when your children, your your business, your children has problems, your your husband has problems at work, you know, you, you have problems when you go out shopping. That's because, so when you have these problems, even before you have problems, because God loves you so much, as you go along the street, you see someone else falling or you see someone else with an accident. If you repented that as mine, because you haven't done that, that's why problems come. Now let's change it. Let's repent of it all as mine and change it. That's when only blessings will come. And many blessings will be poured out. God wants to give you help. So he wants to give you blessings in any way possible. So if you keep falling because of fight, of arguing, you will hear arguings with your neighbor or on TV. So it's for you to repent of how you fell with 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 fightings why is it that i always see fightings when i turn on tv that's because that's what you lose at so it's to quickly repent and to make a new wine skin then he will help you today may you be victorious with his help no matter what happens to receive that help and to be victorious let's all pray so from today let's not lose whatever happens this problem happening is for me to quickly repent and change it to blessings let's all pray Lord, we thank you so much. Who am I? Someone like me that you love me so much and that you want to make me your child and that to make me your child you want to help me and to help all of my family. But at this dawn, I'm not able to become a new wineskin. Father, you still haven't thrown us away. But as we go along our way to see problems and hear problems and to see wrong things and to make us remember and for us to and for us to repent of it as mine, this is how much you love us. But still, I'm living as a prodigal son. Please forgive us. May we now be victorious and to only receive blessings and for us and our children to do more and more well. May we be a blessed family that plants blessings to save this country, to save the world. May we be great pillars. We believe it will happen according to the word. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. May we all go inside of Christ, in, inside of the Lord, to have a new start. How thankful is this love? How thankful that He loves me so much. How much does He want me to receive blessings the whole day? May we repent so that we forget about our past, those things that sadden us, all those things that aren't doing well, to throw it all away and to be a new wineskin where we receive God's help. May there only be victory.